What is happening everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. I hope you lot are doing so, so well and welcome to today's video which is a Chelsea news video where I'll be talking about three pretty big stories. It's been reported that Callum hudson Adoy has signed his new Chelsea contract and it is for mega money, maybe too much. Chelsea's transfer ban could potentially be lifted as soon as January and potentially they might be looking at a big money signing in Wilfred Zaha. And finally, another rumour or reported story that's been going around the rags is that Chelsea and Real Madrid have a reported verbal agreement on the sale of N'Golo Kante to Real Madrid for £100 million, which sounds ridiculous, but we'll get into it. Anyway, guys, before we do get into the content in this video, I want to request that you do subscribe to this YouTube channel and make sure you hit the bell notifications icon because I upload every single day and I want you guys to keep up with the content. And why don't you do me a favor and help me out by liking this video. All right then, let's start with the first story. Callum hudson Adoy. <sighs> For a while now, he was meant to have signed the new contract. The way people around the club were talking and the way he was posting on social media, it, the, uh, the assumption was created that he basically signed the contract and it was gravy. But Frank Lampard was sort of batting away the questions and press conferences and people started to get a bit nervous whether in fact the contract had been signed or not or whether in fact he had a change of heart. But it's been recently reported on social media that he has indeed actually signed the contract. Now, this is from someone close to the club. I don't know if it's official, but apparently people are to expect an announcement soon, which is great. Great news. A five-year deal. What Chelsea fans expected, what people in the football media expected, but something probably people didn't expect is the rumoured wages hudson Adoy will be on. Apparently, it's £180,000 a week. Now, I know other young players get paid a lot. Like, you look at someone like Marcus Rashford, he's on a basic of 200 k a week that rises up to £300,000 a week, which is so much money. And hudson Adoy is an amazing talent, maybe more so than Marcus Rashford. I've got the Chelsea bars that I'd say he is a more talented player and a bigger prospect but still £180,000 a week for a kid who's pretty much only just been plucked out of the academy. Now I get it, Bayern Munich wanted him, they may have even broke their transfer record at the time for him and that obviously meant big things and his agent who's his brother, Callum hudson his brother, Obviously, he's done bits here, but it just blows my mind still. I mean, think about players who've just re-signed. Ruben Loftus-Cheek, an integral player to Chelsea last season. Well, he was really, really effective. More senior than Callum hudson Adoy. He's 23, 24. Looks, you know, he gets picked for England when fit. He's a very important player for Chelsea. Just signed a new deal for about 100k a week, which is about right. And hopefully he'll sign another one in 18 months time for a bit more or something. I think it's about that. And then you look at someone like Hudson the Doy getting paid that much money. Now, I don't want to be too negative. It's great that you signed the new contract, so whatever. Just go with it. But is, has the game gone mad? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below because it just seems nuts to me. I mean, if he performs and is a worldie off the bat, and I know Jaden Sancho is on similar money at Dortmund and they're about the same age, and you could argue they're the same sort of talent level. So if he starts performing immediately, then fine. But it just seems a bit wild to me. Maybe I'm just getting old and don't understand the game anymore. Anyway, let's move on to the next story. And that's the rumour that Chelsea's ban might apparently be lifted in January prematurely so they'd only serve one Windows ban. Now in theory this doesn't come as a shock to me because this has happened before with Spanish clubs. They basically accept the ban, they take on two windows and then they appeal and then they get one window lifted. Apparently it's happened before and it's not an irregular thing. And that's fine, it's probably a good thing right? I mean there is the argument to be made that Frank Lampard and Chelsea should probably look at this squad for a whole season before evaluating where to invest heavily in terms of positions. I mean, you could argue maybe right back, but obviously Reese James is coming through. Maybe a centre back, but Chelsea do have four centre backs. So it's kind of difficult. And then, you know, do you get a superstar striker when Frank Lampard believes so heavily? in Tammy Abraham. But the big story is that Wilfred Zaha wants to come to Chelsea. Now the rumoured transfer fee is about 80 million, which is a lot, but I guess that's what, if you, it's a lot, probably a lot for Zaha, but again, if you think about the value or what he's worth to Palace, he's worth just being in the Premier League, I think gives you around 130 million pounds. And for Palace, he's pretty much their ticket for staying in the Premier League. So 
they'd probably be even reluctant to sell him for 80 million. So you can understand the transfer fee and apparently Zaha's sacked his current agent and getting a new one to push the deal through. So did Chelsea need Wilfred Zaha? Well firstly, they've got their future wingers in Pulisic and hudson Adoy. Fair enough, if both Willian and Pedro go next summer, then yes, bring in another one, and then you've got three starting winger quality level players, and obviously Mason Mount can play on the left wing as well, so you've got four, and that makes sense, but it creates an issue, right? Because suddenly you've got three players that want to be starting Premier League games, in hudson Adoy, Christian Pulisic, and of course, Wilfred Zaha. You don't break your transfer record on an 80 million pound player and not start him in the Premier League. But the fact is, Zaha is a very, very good player. He's in his prime, and he probably would perform well at Chelsea. I know he flopped at Manchester United, but I feel like maybe he would be a really useful weapon and he would improve Chelsea. It's just, it's kind of difficult because the last transfer window when Chelsea were banned, obviously just this recent one, I did say maybe wait till next summer and buy a high scoring winger to replace some of the Eden Hazard goals, someone like a Nicola Pepe who went to Arsenal. But Zaha's not a high scoring winger, I think he like gets maybe 10 goals a season at a push, but maybe that's because he's playing for Crystal Palace. Does those 10 goals turn into 15 plus if he's playing in a Chelsea side? Maybe. Wins a lot of penalties that someone like Jorginho could convert, um, like Milivojevic was doing at Palace. You know, that's a good thing also. So it's a very difficult one. For me, it's not the first name that crops up, especially for that money as well. It just seems a little bit radical, sensational, just headlines. And if he does flop, it's one of those banter situations where Chelsea spent £80 million on Zaha and it didn't work out. I don't see it going as badly as, say, Alexis Sanchez to Arsenal because he's a lot younger than Zaha. He's got much less miles on the clock than Sanchez did. Sanchez has played a lot of football in his career. And I just think it would probably be a little bit more safe but it just doesn't really make that much sense. I mean, I guess Lampard wants to keep Tammy. He wants to keep Mason Mount in the lineup. And maybe Pulisic gets rotated out and hudson Adoy comes in because I know Lampard talks about how important hudson Adoy is. And if he's signing £180,000 a week, he'll probably be starting or they want him to be starting. So what does that mean? Does that mean hudson Adoy and Zaha start? and Pulisic gets rotated in and out. I don't know. It's an interesting one, and I guess we're gonna have to watch this space. So let's move on to the third and final and most sensational story of this Chelsea news video. Apparently, so saith certain newspapers, Chelsea and Real Madrid have agreed terms verbally on the transfer of N'Golo Kante to Real Madrid for £100 million. Off the bat, knee-jerk reactions. Sure, Real Madrid, take our only two world-class players in the space of 12 months away from us. I mean, it just seems super dumb, right? And N'Golo Kante is widely accepted as the best player in his position or in his role, the best destroyer, the best interceptor in world football. But I'm gonna play devil's advocate here for just a second. Next summer, he'll be 29 years old going on 30. Now that's not super old, but it's the kind of age where Someone like Kante relies on his engine. He's always been brilliant because he's been on every blade of grass. You know, he covers every part of the pitch. He's always running. So when that starts to deplete, does N'Golo Kante start to deplete as a player? Maybe. And he has started having a lot more niggly injuries, which is worrying. So maybe that continues by next summer and a player that's about to turn 30 maybe wants to try out Real Madrid at the end of his career for a final contract and a hundred millions, a lot of money. And maybe this is something that was discussed in the Hazard deal or the Mateo Kovacic deal while you know Chelsea negotiated a deal up to 130 million for Eden Hazard, which remember is an astonishing fee for a player with months left on his contract. Um, and it's again 29 years old or touching 29. So that was an astonishing deal really for Chelsea and Kovacic was a decent deal as well for a young player who's very talented. So maybe there was, look, get this done, this done, and then if you want Kante next summer, you can have him for a hundred million pounds. But 
Maybe what will he have two years in him at the top level? Again, he's that if he was more of like a Perlo type midfielder that just sort of sits back, dictates the game and is cultured like Iniesta, but he's not. He's um he's a destroyer, he covers ground. So maybe he'll be running out of gas a little bit more, and therefore Chelsea will slightly be inclined to you know cash in on him massively. Remember they bought him for 32 million. They've won a Premier League with him, a Europa League, an FA Cup. They've done well out of him. So does it make sense? I know the knee-jerk reaction is, no way, don't sell Kante to Real Madrid, who have just bought Eden Hazard, our two best world-class players. But if you think about it, maybe a little bit more objectively and pragmatically, maybe it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world in 12 months time or whatever in 11 months time eh. think about maybe Ampadu's coming through we buy another defensive midfielder destroyer that's up and coming in Europe and is 21 years old or you know early 20s and then you sell the Kante who's about to touch 30 for mega money I don't know I'm just playing devil's advocate at the same time it would be nice to keep him for another two or three years and see if you know he he stays away from injury and then keeps performing at a high level for Chelsea. Just, you know, trying to weigh up the options here. Anyway guys, what do you think? I want to get your thoughts and opinions in the comments below on every story I've spoken about in today's video. Get down in the comments, express your opinions and I'll be keen on reading them. Other than that, a couple of quick plugs guys. If you do want to support Football Therapy, you are welcome to via Patreon or Streamlabs. Both links are in the description. It's just a way to support the channel and keep it going by like donating a dollar or something whatever you feel comfortable doing you guys can also follow me on social media at football yannick that's at football yannick both twitter and instagram other than that i think i've done everyone so you lot enjoy the football and i will see you later you ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck i'ma get it how i'm living i'ma walk the walk outline my lines i rap through thought body bag the verse outline the chuck in my life seen trouble, hustle on the double, silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle, yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble, I only love this paper, sorry I don't I let me be.